let's begin by having a show of hands. Anyone who has a smartphone, please raise your hands. An iPhone, Samsung, Huawei, anything really. Okay, so that's like 90% of the people from what I saw. The rest are probably busy using their phones. You know, I didn't need to ask that question. I could have said with very high certainty that each and every one of us in this room has a smartphone. And why wouldn't we, right? It's a necessity. It's an essential. It has completely changed our lives. One of the first things we do when we wake up in the morning is grab our phones. Smartphones have replaced landlines, photo albums, flashlights, alarm clocks, and the list just goes on. What smartphones have done to our lives and to the tech industry is an example of disruption and something very similar is gonna happen in the energy sector of Saudi Arabia. Globally and historically, the kingdom has been known as a fossil fuel based country and is one of the largest producers of oil in the world. However, the country has recognized the harmful effects of fossil fuels and aims to generate 50% of the nation's power using renewable energy by 2030. Okay, let's take a step back and understand why we need renewable energy to begin with. The sun provides the earth with heat and light, but a lot of this heat is being trapped within the earth, which increases the global temperature. This is known as global warming. Now, why is the heat being trapped within the earth? It's because fossil fuels such as oil and gas produce carbon dioxide or CO2, which traps the sun's heat and causes global warming. Collectively, global warming leads to climate change, which results in increasing temperatures, rising sea levels, and land degradation. So really, fossil fuels are the root of the problem. On the other hand, renewable energy resources, such as wind and solar, produce zero carbon dioxide and do not cause global warming at all. That's why we need them. Around the world, efforts are being made to reduce the global carbon emissions, such as the 2016 Paris Agreement, which has the goal of keeping the global temperature within 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. To achieve that, the global carbon emissions need to drop to zero by the year 2050. And Saudi Arabia was one of the countries to sign the agreement. In essence, renewable energy is the way to go and the whole world is moving towards it. In order to solve the global warming issue, the entire energy market is predicted to go a rapid and transformative change. In fact, such a level of disruption has not been seen for more than a hundred years ago, back when automobiles or internal combustion engines first appeared. Hence, to properly make sense of what's to come, I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about the major disruptive technologies that are going to play a key role in Saudi Arabia's energy transition. The first disruptive technology on my list is solar power. Simply put, solar power is the power produced from the sun with the help of devices known as solar panels. And this power can be used in your houses. Note, zero fossil fuels throughout the whole process. And truly, solar power is the main player due to which the huge energy transition is going to happen. Because like I said, we get power from the sun and the kingdom has a geographical advantage as it receives sunlight throughout the year. However, as of last year, less than 2% of the Saudi households used solar power to meet their electricity needs. And it's because even though the price of solar energy has severely declined over the years, it was still more expensive than the oil and gas fuels in Saudi Arabia. But earlier this year, in 2021, a Saudi-based solar plant locked in a world record low price for solar power of just 1.04 cents per kilowatt hour. It was a huge event as it suddenly and directly makes solar power much more feasible in the kingdom, meaning that the Saudi households can now use solar power for daily purposes. Nevertheless, there is a catch when it comes to solar power. The sun doesn't shine during the nights, so you don't have solar power during night times. Thankfully, 
there is a solution, and this brings me to the next disruptive technology on my list, known as battery energy storage systems, or simply batteries. So, fundamentally, batteries are used to store energy, like for example, you charge your phone, and then you use your phone using that charged battery. The same idea applies to solar power. During the mornings and afternoons when the sun is shining bright, there's a very high chance that extra power is being generated, which is not being used at that point in time. That's where batteries come in. The extra solar power can be used to charge the batteries, which can then later be used during the nights when the sun isn't shining. And thus, solar power and batteries go hand in hand. These types of battery energy storage systems used to be very expensive, but over the last decade, the price of batteries has dropped dramatically, meaning that it's now more affordable than ever to store the power from the sun. It's also worth mentioning that the performance of these batteries is greatly affected by the surrounding temperature, and thus, as a result, there is a need for a market that develops batteries catered specifically to the weather conditions of Saudi Arabia. Soon enough, in addition to having batteries in your smartphones and other electronic devices, you will now have batteries that provide power to your house and will al allow you to generate, store, and use your own power. Solar isn't the only renewable energy technology seeking to cause disruption in the energy sector. Wind power as well has grown to be much more economical and stable because now we have these big wind turbines which are like 150 to 250 meters tall. And as we have moved to higher altitudes, the wind is more stable and the wind blows more rapidly, which means more power is being produced. And also the idea of using batteries for energy storage also applies to wind power. As a matter of fact, Saudi Arabia is constructing one of the largest wind farms in the entire Middle East, which is expected to provide power to around 70,000 households per year, thus promoting and accelerating higher renewable energy penetration in the kingdom. The last disruptive technology on my list is hydrogen, specifically green and blue hydrogen. Now you might be wondering, what's green or blue hydrogen? So let's first talk about green hydrogen. By definition, green hydrogen is the hydrogen produced from renewable energy resources through a process known as electrolysis. And this hydrogen can be converted to electricity using fuel cells. Again, zero carbon emissions throughout the whole process. Green hydrogen has the potential to decarbonize the entire energy sector and is being dubbed as the new oil for the upcoming years. Because hydrogen is an energy carrier. It can be used for domestic purposes. It can be used in the steel, chemical, and transportation industry. Furthermore, cheap solar and wind resources directly pave the way and make the incorporation of green hydrogen into the energy mix more achievable. Saudi Arabia has acknowledged the potential of green hydrogen given its strategic location characteristics such as over-the-year sunshine, abundant free space, and prosperous winds. As a result, green hydrogen has become a sought-after resource needed for swift and successful energy transition. As a part of the Vision 2030 initiative, the kingdom has announced one of the largest green hydrogen projects in the world to be built in the city of Neom. Thus, legitimately, the kingdom can go from being one of the largest producers of oil to becoming one of the largest producers and exporters of green or blue hydrogen. Okay, let's now talk about blue hydrogen. Again, by definition, blue hydrogen is the hydrogen produced from fossil fuels through a process known as steam methane reforming or SMR, and this process produces carbon dioxide. Now, if fossil fuels are being used, and carbon dioxide is being produced, why do we need blue hydrogen? Does it not defeat the whole purpose of reducing carbon emissions? Well, first, the carbon dioxide being produced is being captured and stored. And second, for a country like Saudi Arabia, which has large amounts of fossil fuels, jumping straight to renewable-based green hydrogen isn't very practical. Instead, using the existing fossil fuels to generate low carbon-based blue hydrogen makes more sense because once the infrastructure for blue hydrogen is set, it's then more realistic to jump to or incorporate green hydrogen. Eventually, 
the entire energy market is going to be disrupted. And this is going to cause disruption in the lives of individuals and well-established companies. There's going to be a shift in dynamics within the existing oil and gas companies because now they need to think about what it means for them. It's a challenging market to be in, but at the same time, it's creating opportunities to enter a new market. New job opportunities are going to be created, which means more energy field experts are needed, and this will cause disruption in the education sector to produce more qualified individuals. Renewable energy development will lead to new industries, which will be involved directly or indirectly, thus leading to new economic growth paradigm. We are in a competition, a race between how quickly we are using fossil fuels and causing harm to the environment versus how quickly we are creating and implementing the technologies I've discussed. And unfortunately, we are not winning this day, and that's why we absolutely need the energy disruption to happen. So, ready or not, the disruptive energy era is here. And so, how does one deal with disruption? Well, we can begin by having a disruptive mindset, and that is an idea worth spreading. Thank you.